hello, hello, and welcome. I'm Zilla, and this is my live stream where I play The Forgotten City, which is a game set in an ancient Roman city buried deep underground. And I talk about all of the cool, nifty ancient things in it, and also whatever strikes my fancy. Um, I hope you're doing well. If you're here live in the chat, feel free to say hello. I'd love to see you. And, uh, otherwise, let's get started. Also, hello, new viewers. Thank you so much. I really have enjoyed seeing all of the excitement over my channel in the last week. I promise there is more ancient content coming, as well as more sort of philosophical and political stuff. Um, and more collabs. <clears throat> oh, hello to that lovely ancient style loading screen. You know they had that. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, this uh, this little pattern is something that you see a lot on, like, signet rings and seals. I'm actually taking a course on Luwian, which is a uh, sister language of Hittite, and a lot of the signet rings and seals that they use have this sort of curving pattern. What? You... you didn't think I was going to be that kind of dork who takes a class on hieroglyphic Luwian for fun? What are you doing here? <laughs> That's just me, your internet goth G GF, who likes old dead things. Uh, I'm not your girlfriend. Except for one of you. You know who you are. All jokes aside, I, I usually try to start this up a little before stream starts so that we can get the loading process out of the way, uh, but we had some technical difficulties, by which I mean my first summer day in my new apartment. And I didn't know exactly how devastatingly hot it was going to be, so we had some adjusting to do. Will I end up cutting this part of the stream when I upload it to YouTube? I don't know. So, as long as I'm talking over the loading screen, I might as well tell you a bit more about the game if you haven't been watching along. Oh! Okay, good, we're starting. So, well, now that we've loaded, and I just said I was going to tell you about the game. So, we are currently beneath the city, and we have found this ancient Greek man in a bunch of Greek artifacts in what was above the ground, well, above, above here anyway, ah, in a larger city. you've returned. A Roman city. I have returned. Thank you. He won't tell us his name. Good to see you again, friend. Did you find what you need? So, we didn't get the chance to talk to him too much last time about any of the things we usually get to talk to characters about. Uh, because he wanted to have a philosophical debate. He's been so lonely down here with nobody to debate. It was very, very Greek. <laughs> very Athenian. Very Athenian. Um, okay, so what is your story? You mean, how did I end up living alone in this cave with nothing but these relics of the past for company? It's a long story. I mean, it sounds fascinating. I was a quarrelsome young man. At 19, I left Corinth for Rome to study rhetoric at one of her finest academies, so I could argue more forcefully. 
Back then I used to enjoy verbally sparring with everyone I could, and I was good. One night I found myself in a tent, in an argument with a drunk mercenary. It became heated, he drew a gladius, and I won the argument, but lost my life. I woke up on the banks of the Styx at a campfire opposite Karen. Of course, I tried to persuade her to let me return, but even with all my skill, I failed. I settled in, made friends, and learned what I could, quickly realizing our little community faced certain death under the Golden Rule. So I began looking for a place to hide underground. Fortunately, I found this place waiting for me. You see, I was not the first to take refuge here. I returned to my friends above, persuaded them to join me, and twelve of us descended for the last time to live out our days hidden from Hades tyranny. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here, especially if you have not been following along. So, uh, a short recap of what we have learned, and this is very spoilery, so if you would like to get the full story, go start back at the beginning of my streams of this and you can catch up along the way. Um, okay, so we have learned that we are, in fact, in the underworld that this is some little annex of Hades, of, of Pluto, Pluto's domain, and um, that everybody here had some variation of this experience that he just described, where they woke up on the banks of a river, greeted by a god of death, um, or, a, or a psychopomp, someone who leads souls from the living to the dead, um, including us at the beginning of our journey. We met someone named Karen, or Charon. <laughs> um, so we don't know why we're stuck in this little annex of hell, but uh, hell is a misnomer. But I mean, this, this particular place is kind of hellish. There are definitely a lot of, um, a lot of cursed souls down here. In any case, um, there are 23 people on the register of those living in the city above. This guy is not on that register. He was apparently from a previous group. The people up there all seem to have died in the year 64, uh, or 64, 65. CE when there was a great fire in Rome, and this is during the reign of Emperor Nero, so if you've heard that Niddle, Nero fiddled while Rome burned, that's that's what they're talking about. Um, did Nero actually fiddle while Rome burned? Well, one, there weren't fiddles, so no, he would have played a liar. But second, there's a lot of controversy, even at the time, over what started the fire and who was to blame. Um, some people blame Nero, saying that he deliberately set and had people go out to spread the fire so that he could rebuild over the heart of Rome with some grand palace, which he did do. Um, uh, the palace building, I mean. Um, or Nero blamed it on this brand new cult of weirdos who uh, worshipped only one god and refused to submit to the emperor's justice called the Christians. I mean, there is a lot of anti-Christian stuff going on at this time. And, and really, it's because the Christians were kind of jerks, um, but also just like kind of jerks about being othered. Um, so yes, they were definitely being oppressed. Uh, no, it's not like it's not like a, a religious minority in like a seriously um, unequal country in oh, that's a complicated statement I'll walk that back and, and ask you to uh, watch some of my videos on the topic because um, it's very complicated but basically we know that this whole area is populated by um, golden statues of people. Oops, I waited too long. Uh, golden statues of people, and uh, if anybody in this town breaks the one rule, 
they come to life and shoot everybody, turning them into more golden statues. Um, down here, there are no golden statues, thus freedom from Hades' tyranny. Um, what is the one rule? The many shall suffer for the sin of the one. What is sin to a Roman? Um, but anyway, what is sin to Hades, to Pluto, is up for debate, really. Like, this is, this is a, a central question in the game. Nobody quite knows what the rules are, uh, which is terrifying. Um, but that's kind of where we are. So apparently hiding down here away from all of the statues means that he's not been subject to this law anymore. Um, and apparently there were 13 of them down here, but he's the last one left. Um, why people can live and grow old and die when they're already in the underworld? I'm not sure yet. <laughs> Not sure if it will be explained or whatever. Um, now, he mentioned going from Corinth, which is a major Greek city on the isthmus between the mainland and the Peloponnese, uh, to Rome. So he's not actually from the sort of pre-Roman times that we tend to think of ancient Greece. He, he is uh, from a time when Rome ruled all of the Greek territories and when he would have been considered a Roman citizen and could freely go to the rhetorical colleges in Rome, um, which were at that point considered even higher than the, the schools of Athens. Sometimes, by some people, again, complicated. <laughs> um, one other thing I wanted to mention from his little speech there is that he mentioned a mercenary drawing a gladius that is the standard army issue short sword of the roman period that is what you will see if we if we go further into this game and see um some of the characters who who had swords we might be able to see that they were that they had a gladius so that's sort of pretty standard and that's how he died so Let's ask him about the uh, Roman versus Greek issue, shall we? They are one and the same. The Romans call him Pluto, but long before that, my people called him Hades. So, this is one of those things that, again, is more complicated than it seems. Uh, the Romans did not just copy all of the Greek myths whole cloth and rename everything. Uh, although this game does tend to tend to lean on that pretty hard. Um, this game is, is very into sort of saying that the truth is the same as a through line through a long, uh, through lots of different interpretations and lots of different lenses. So Hades, Pluto are the same in that they are both king of the underworld. Um, they both have their sort of central myth in the abduction and rape of Persephone, or Proserpina in Latin, um, and she becomes queen of the underworld. Um, and we got here through a temple of Demeter, or Keres, uh, but it's a Greek-style temple with a, a very nice facsimile of, I believe, the seated goddess, seated Demeter statue from uh, a dig site in Turkey. I want to... S I looked this up and I've already forgotten the name. I want to say the name was was like Cardia or something. I really should know. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry if you if you know the name and I don't. Uh, but but you can look this up. Um, so, so that's one of the neat things about this game. It's also possible, and some people theorize, and you can, you can watch my video about uh, we need to talk about Persephone to go a little bit more into this, or rather watch uh, Overly Sarcastic Productions video about Persephone and then watch my video. <laughs> uh, and they kind of go into the, the problem of Hades and where Hades comes from and whether Hades even existed as a, as a personified god in early Greek times, but certainly by, by Roman times, these are, these are pretty true statements. Okay, moving on. My generation was wiped out 
turned to gold many years ago. My friends and I were able to avoid the same fate by hiding down here. I think it's safest to assume that if I was to return, Hades would realize that his furies hadn't finished the job, and he'd send them after me again. Well, that's pretty interesting. So he calls the uh, the activated statues, the moving statues, furies. Um, if you aren't familiar with the furies, they are um, underworld goddesses subject to Hades' rule. Um, and they are typically connected with the punishment of severe infraction, um, both in the living and the dead. So they are strictly to be avoided. It's pretty impressive that he even is daring to name them here, but then again, he can be pretty sure that Hades and the underworld gods can't hear him from here, since there are no golden statues. Um, but they were so feared that they were often referred to euphemistically as the kindly ones um, or other things like that and uh, they would do things like drive a person completely insane uh, destructively violently insane or punish them for eternity within Hades realm um, Hades and Pluto both share their names with the underworld as, as a whole um, so, you might be punished by the Furies for killing your father. That's sort of a, a like, the thing. Um, but being, specifically sinning against your own family, your own blood, was generally the sort of thing that was punished by the Furies. So, interesting that he calls these statues Furies. Yes, they do seem to be agents of punishment from... Hades, but what exactly are the sins? Um, it's really unclear. So he knows that his generation, his group of, of people who lived in the, in the upper city was wiped out by these golden statues and turned to gold, but he and his, his little coterie escaped down here. I kind of wonder how he knows. Like, did did they actively run from the golden statues? And if so, how did they keep them from following? <laughs> you know, it's a lot of questions. I don't know. I wish I could ask. I fear that if you were to utter my name in the city, even by mistake, that Hades would hear you and know I am still alive. Right. So that's why we're not going to get his name. Is he is afraid that Hades even knowing that some of some of his uh, particular punished souls have have escaped d even down into this dank, damp cave uh, might send golden statues after him. I'm afraid I am the only one left. There were twelve of us in the beginning, but one by one friends passed away. Some for malnutrition, others from madness and despair. It has been lonely. Before my unexpected visit from Kabash some weeks ago, I had not seen another person in many, many years. So we came down here in search of a man named Kabash, who is an Egyptian. Uh, he is on the registry that we have of people currently living in the above and has been missing for weeks. Um, we followed a tip from his Greek friend Georgios down here through the Temple of Demeter. Um, so there were 12 who escaped. That That is actually interesting. Um, there are, of course, 12 Olympian gods, so I don't know whether that means anything or not. But he won't tell us his name, so we can't we can't follow that line. <laughs> One wonders how he survived down here. But then again, he's already dead and he knows it, so maybe he didn't have to. Living in darkness is not without its challenges. The first challenge is diet. Fortunately, I found that eating fresh fish provides most of the nutrients I need. 
And sometimes, when there are green people living up above, I service at night and salvage the offerings they've left in the temple of Demeter. The greater challenge is the isolation. So I like to imagine arguments where I argue both sides. But like so many things in life, arguments are better with a partner. Yeah, so a couple of uh, unrealistic things about that. Don't try and survive on a diet of only fish. You, your innards will not be happy. Uh, then again, there's no guarantee his ever works. So there's that. Um, we did know that somebody was taking the offerings to Demeter, and offerings to Demeter are probably grain, produce, uh, potentially sometimes sacrifices of, of meat and uh, uh, other such things, but that usually would be a bigger ritual than just a simple offering. Um, the other unrealistic thing, of course, is <laughs> that he has not himself gone completely bonkers from the isolation. Um, if it has, in fact, been many years since he last had another person around, <sighs> solitary confinement does weird things to you, and I, I, I think most of us know that by now, <laughs> uh, living in the times we do. Um, I do think it's kind of funny. Uh, there have been some indications that the developers of this game were thinking about the pandemic. <laughs> And so, I, I do think it's kind of interesting that he has stayed inside, taken uh, food only by delivery, and seen no one for years. Um, that's, yeah, something to think about. Okay, so that looks like most of what we can talk to him about. Oh no, never mind, there are quite a few more questions. These are the, well, some of these are definitely the, like, common questions we can ask everybody, so. Do you know a way out of here? Huh. If I did, would I be living like this? So, the golden rule, of course, the, the many shall, sh shall suffer for the sins of one, so. Did we not discuss it at length already? Oh, I see. You're toying with me. Ha. <laughs> a nice assumption. Um... We did have a long philosophical discussion with him in the last stream, if you want to go back and look at that. You seek the plaque bearing the Egyptian inscription. It is a cursed object, and I would be happy to give it to you if Kabash had not already taken it. Right. So there is a grand temple up at the highest point of the buildings in the town and it is sealed shut uh, and there's this obelisk in front of it and it's had these four panels removed so we're looking for each one we we have an idea that one is in latin one is in greek one is egyptian and one is an unknown um so apparently kabash has the egyptian plaque I will tell you that you may find him hostile. To prepare for your encounter, there are certain things you must know. Very few know this, but before the Romans came to this city, it was once entirely Greek. The architecture, the temples, and the people. When the Romans came, in typical fashion, they claimed it as their own, built over everything that could be built over, and renamed the things that could not. Thus, the Shrine of Persephone became the Shrine of Proserpina. And when they found an obelisk bearing the name Hades, they tore it off and replaced it with Pluto instead. And the city's dwindling Greek residents, witnessing this compulsive Roman conquest, decided to preserve what they could of their heritage. They gathered their art and valuables, secreted them away through the Temple of Demeter, and hid them here, out of reach of the Romans. Right, so this tells us what we could already guess, that the four panels bear the name of the god of the underworld in their respective 
languages and cultures. However, there was one thing that always seemed out of place to me, and it is the very thing you seek. An even older plaque bearing an Egyptian inscription. How did I get here? We had no idea until years later when the first of my friends began to die. As a result of their deaths, we began to dig catacombs branching off from this cavern to lay them to rest. We extended the tunnel so far that we accidentally discovered another, an even older tunnel, which somebody had gone to great lengths to keep hidden. Suddenly it made sense why there was an out-of-place Egyptian plaque among our people's possessions. You see, we proud Greeks had thought the Romans beasts for stealing and corrupting our heritage. But it turns out this game has been going on much longer than any of us imagined. I think it is best you head through the catacombs and follow Kabash's trail. So... This is, I think, probably the through line of this game. The idea of conquest, of cultural conquest, and of the pride that people have in erasing others for their own benefit. Um, the Roman plaque, we know where it is. It's in a Christian shrine. They tore it off the obelisk because it offended them. The Greek plaque, we know where it is because it was found among a trove of Greek artifacts by a by a man with some learning disabilities and we could take it from him but it's one of the things that makes him happy so we haven't so kabash has this egyptian plaque i guess there are certain things you must see for yourself take this key you need it to open the gate so key to the catacombs this is a pretty typical construction for a Roman style key, or even uh, even a Greek key, really. Um, metal, a fairly simple tooth structure, but you know the the locks work fairly similarly to locks now. Enjoyed our chat, but please keep my presence here a secret. Yes. Okay, so here we are, hanging fish, so we can we can see a little bit of information about what's down here. Uh, let's see if we can zoom in on this fish. Actually, I kind of wonder. No, I don't know enough about fish to tell you what kind of fish that's supposed to be. I'm sure it's a real one. <laughs> um, let's see. Ooh, hello. Alright, what do we got here? Ah, you've returned. I didn't go anywhere, fool. So we have this this bust, it's usually called a bust of Pericles. We have a nice lyre, which is sort of the standard Greek instrument have these copies of wonderful ah, Greek vases. Well, we have the Greek for the many shall suffer for the sins of one. Can I read this? Aton hamartion du enos hoi Poloi, ahoy poloi, of course. Uh, which verb did they use? Pask. Pask. Hon, pask hontai. Okay, yes. So, yeah, more or less the same thing. So, so, hamartion, if you are a biblical scholar, you might recognize that word is what's used in the, uh, in the Greek Bible ah, for sin. Um, but in, in classical Greek it just means 
a mistake, uh, missing the mark, quite literally. Like, if you're shooting an arrow and you miss the target, you would say hamartium. Um, and pashon, pashontai, um, well, there are a couple of things there. So, so hoi poloi might be a phrase that you recognize as a, as a unit that we've adopted into English. We, um, use it to mean the base crowd. <laughs> and that's actually a usage that they did have uh, sometimes in classical Greek, uh, saying, saying, you know, the hoi polloi, you know, the, the, the many, the mob out there um, is a very elitist phrase. Uh, but it does just mean the many. It means the people. Uh, polo, polloi is many. Um, and then... That verb, paschontai, um, from from uh, paschein, um, it it means to experience, to suffer, to endure. It has all of these sort of connotations. So it also kind of just means like that something will happen to them. <laughs> okay, on to this bathtub large bathtub which has been converted into a rather eccentric bed. Well, you know, it, it kind of makes sense here in this context because he had to make do with whatever they managed to secrete away, but it's also a reference to the ancient ph philosopher Diogenes, who was the original cynic. And cynic here, in its original meaning, uh, kunekos, uh, the dog-like. <laughs> um, so philosophically what cynic means is not so much somebody who's like jaded with things as somebody who rejects the unnecessary, unnecessary complications of modernity and nicety, um, who questions the need for you know technology and civilization um, in a very personal sort of way. Um, Diogenes, my favorite Diogenes story, uh, there are quite a few actually, like people will say, we'll talk about Diogenes Lantern, which is a philosophical con uh, concept of, uh, you know, a lantern which shows the, the truth of a thing. Um, but, and like, there's that very famous one where, you know, what is a man and, and a featherless upright biped and then you, you know Diogenes holds out a plucked chicken and is this a man but my favorite Diogenes story is one day he like he was he was he had cut down all his possessions to just his his bathtub bed and a small clay cup and one day he went down to the river to drink some water from his small clay cup and he saw a little slave boy cupping his hands to drink the water and he cursed out loud and dashed his cup because he was holding on to things he didn't need. <laughs> so, um, so kind of, I, I don't know if it's really uh, fitting in terms of, of our unnamed Greek friend's philosophy, but it's certainly in terms of his circumstance, making do with, with less. There sure is a lot of water down here. Where, where does this go? Okay, this goes to the catacombs. I don't want to go there yet. I want to explore. Is there anything else? Nice little clay oil lamp that looks exactly the same as the Roman ones upstairs. Some dirty laundry. Gotcha. Ah, you've returned. Have I? The light. Little pathway. Is this where we came in? No. Maybe. No, we came in over there, but I bet this leads back to it. Oh, 
Oh, some kind of silver piece. I don't recognize this, but it's beautiful. You can see the carved hoplites engraved on it. I wonder if I can get a better view of those cups. Yeah, I don't know those pieces, but I would bet that they're real since everything else in here is. Oh no, we did come this way. Totally came this way. around in the water, see what there is to see. It's uh, shallower than it looks. I thought we would uh, be swimming here. But, but no. Maybe there's not much. I mean, clearly they want us to go straight for the catacombs once we're here. style of burial. Um, although you would find this kind of thing sometimes in, in Egypt um, and presumably in Rome. I don't, I don't quite know. But this is not a very Greek style of burial. I guess they were making do with what they had. We've uh, seen this lovely broken Korea before friend of the philosopher appearing to be mummified. One of the eleven friends he outlived. These copies of the geometric vase I talked about last time. straight up skeleton here. So that person's been dead a long time, I guess. And who knows what happened to their shroud. Gosh. Why is this skeleton outside of the niche? Looks very strange. Is there even a skull with it? geometric base? I think it might be. Very, very old Greek stuff. I'm getting a weird vibe about this. So, uh... Oh right, I have a flashlight. <laughs> I forgot I had a flashlight. I don't really want the flashlight. So... Here is my golden bow, just in case I need to shoot something. All this crumbled masonry and that completely different brickwork past there is just making me feel a little uneasy. 
Ah, there's a, a nicer copy of that vase where we can actually see it. That looks like a, another copy of that cup. Can we zoom in? We can't zoom in when we're holding the bow. What if... Oh, wow, look at this beautiful cup. It appears to be... Enameled silver? Gosh. I don't recognize this piece, but I wish I did. That's gorgeous. And here are some just uh, plain shovels. Where they got them, I don't know. And how they managed to carve rock with shovels, I don't know. But okay. Alright, let's go back to not the wooden bow. The golden bow. It's important, because if you shoot with the wooden bow, you just shoot a regular arrow. If you shoot with the golden bow, it turns organic matter to gold. Those are different outcomes. So this is... Oh, this looks like a very well-put-together cistern. We know for a fact that the cisterns contain peeled statues. Or at least the lower one does. And I don't know whether this is the lower or the upper. But we've got that water flowing there. And these watertight stones. Solid brickwork. Where... Okay. Nothing much over here except tumbled brickwork. Sure. What? Kind of looks like it's moving. Tell you what, I'm gonna draw my bow before I get closer to it. just be a whole statue. Certainly that one is. That doesn't mean they don't move. They'll look at you. Yeah. Okay. We're getting arrows. There are definitely some baddies down here. Oh, but look at this. This! An Egyptian pillar, and look, it is carved all over. Oh. Gorgeous hieroglyphics. I do not, sadly, read hieroglyphic Egyptian. I don't know Demotic. It's on the list. A uh, little concerned about this glowing water. Um, that might mean that I need to shoot something. We'll see. Um, but yes, so... I think it is very likely... These doors... These Egyptian faces... This column... I think we have found... beginnings of an Egyptian city that was buried like the Greek city. Oh, look at these walls. <laughs> the Ankh symbol. 
somewhat ironic here. The Ankh symbol, of course, being that the sign for life, often eternal life. Um, the Um, so, we here are the dead, seeing the sign for eternal life. Although that's, that's not actually uncommon on Egyptian tombs, from what I know. Um, this cartouche, is it empty? Why is the cartouche empty? I don't know. Oh, there's just so much I don't know about the Egyptian stuff. I wish I had an Egyptologist with me. Alas, I am merely a Hellenist with some obligatory knowledge of Rome. Um, and I no longer know how to read hieroglyphics offhand. Uh, yes, yes, I know the door is locked. I'm just trying to look at it. One thing I think is just fabulous is you can see this blue color where all of this would have been painted, and you can see the blue and the red, um, gorgeously decorated. I wish we could just go straight in, but of course we cannot. So, on with our, our venture. Let's, uh, see what there is to see. Now I am a terrible shot for those of you who have not been following along, so that's why I'm being so cautious. <laughs> I do not like combat, but it's just I knew that there was stuff down here that I wanted to see. Uh-huh. enough away that I can't tell. I don't hear any groaning. It is kind of interesting that there are statues down there at the, the face of the Egyptian area. This looks totally Greek. Right? Like these columns? These are not Egyptian columns. Okay. You're not a peeled statue, or you are a statue statue. Alright, cool. Egyptian, uh, what are they called? Sarap? I swear I know that word usually, but not right now. <laughs> okay, so we've got stairs leading even further down. Da -da 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 -da. Don't love it. these doors. These are sort of plain Roman style doors. No idea what I'm gonna see on the other side. Try to look through the crack. It's 
not very effective. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Got statues that aren't moving. I like that. This is a. Well, this is definitely Egyptian work. Look at these magnificent columns. Ugh. Okay, that guy is definitely moving, right? I don't like that. Oh, there's definitely something moving. Oh, I don't like it at all. <laughs> I wish that I didn't have to do this to see all the cool Egyptian stuff. Oh, come on. You can see why I don't like getting close. My aim is terrible. Oh boy. There they come for me. Oh boy. Take it! Die! And... This guy's coming for me. Kick it! Kick it! Go away! die? I'll shoot you again. Oh boy. You can see my little health bar went down just from that one encounter. God. Alright. Um, I gotta move on. I cannot keep stalling here. You would think that if there were others in this room they would have run for me then. So. Um... Trying to. Oh, what happened to. Oh, there she is. I'm just trying to see what they're wearing. They don't seem to be wearing much. Oh no, there are more. Cool. Fun. Give me more arrows, yes, please. Sweet. What? What am I hearing? I'm really confused. I really don't like those sounds. Oh, it's right there. It just couldn't get to me because of the other statues. Cool. That's... That's great. You just stay there and let me aim. Very, very badly. Yes, we good? Alright. Wah! <laughs> I just want to look at the shiny Egyptian stuff. Is that so wrong? Oh wow, look at these paintings. 
Somebody with a bird head, it looks like. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. That is reminding me of Anubis, but I really, I just don't know enough about the original artifact to be sure that I'm interpreting it correctly. I mean, this looks like scales. You see this uh, sort of T construction in the background, and there's a, a person and definitely a deity. And then that might be the psychopomp, or Thoth. fight these other statues. Okay. That one was a statue statue. That one isn't, though. Ah, uh, here he comes. Okay. Don't look. <laughs> I was hoping for an examine button and I got a kick button. Oops. Here's another door. Looks very similar to the last one. Yeah. More Egyptian garb. They seem to be running out from there. And here is our fellow that we just killed. He is, uh... Well, it's a female statue, it looks like. But it is really... Uh... It's not giving me the same prompts as the peeled statues before, so I wonder if they're the same. So, more copies of these beautiful Egyptian vases some very different looking brickwork, right? I don't know enough about Egyptian brickwork, but this does not look Greek or Roman to me. Uh, another man wearing that sort of... Oh, Egyptian tools! Bronze-bladed woodworking tools. Oh, fascinating. Don't highlight it. I want to see it. <laughs> so we have very different shapes here than we get in the Roman tools, which we saw up above in Virgil's shop. Right? We have this almost like backwards-feeling ads um, that, that kind of interestingly rounded copper tool, or bronze tool, I suppose they are. This looks like a house. I wonder if we can go inside it. No, of course not. <laughs> More of these vases. Did I get a prompt for something that wasn't a vase? Oh, I haven't seen this one. What? Was that somebody coming for me? Or was that just me in the water? This way, get it, get it, get away. Where are you? Oh no! I can't even see. I might die. 
I have no idea what's going on. Go away. Go away. Nope. Get away. They do appear to be wrapped. So maybe they're more classic mummies. I am just gonna stand here until I heal a little bit more, because I did not expect there to be more that way. Well, if there are more that way, then maybe I can't actually progress up there. Oh, hello. Hello, giant Anubis statue. I like that. That's interesting. I'm trying to help each other. People falling on the ground. Another of those uh, little tiny axes, a little woodworking tool. Oh my gosh! Senate! They have a Senate board! Oh, if you have been watching my videos, you know I am a big board game fan, and this is one of the oldest board games we know about. This is Senate. Um, this is a copy of a real Senate board with a little pull-out drawer with the pieces. I don't know how to play offhand, but I'm pretty sure it's a little bit like an... Somewhere between, like, sorry, where you can knock each other off, and like a, a backgammon sort of thing. A at least that's my impression. <laughs> Someday I'm gonna learn how to play Senate, just because. Okay. So we have a broken statue here. I wonder if we can find... Oh, and a totally different style of tripod. Um, we've talked on this stream before about ancient Greek tripods as sort of offerings to the gods, and here we have a completely different, a very geometric style with straight lines, no elaborately worked clawed feet. have the top of this statue anywhere? Oh, did I just hear another guy? I really hope I didn't. I don't want to shoot more guys. I just want to look at cool Egyptian statues. Okay blocked pathway there, but this statue, classic Anubis statue, oh, and I can, man with the head of the jackal and Anubis statue, yes, yes, this is Anubis, it looks very, very similar in construction to the other one, they might have both been Anubis, or they might have been Anubis and Thoth, or Tahuti, or um, Anubis and Kerti, who I believe is the Egyptian psychopomp, but again, not my forte. This guy looks like he might be wearing some kind of armor. I it's hard to tell. A woman? woman with short hair. I, you'd have to ask an Egyptologist how, how accurate that is, but I'm assuming it's fairly. You can see her top is wrapped, but she has the same sort of short skirt. And he is trying to get in. Of course, we don't have the option to get him out of the way. Well, I'm gonna guess that this is hieroglyphics that say, for the sins of the one the many shall suffer. Yeah. But I don't actually know hieroglyphs, so alas, I cannot confirm it. But yeah, here is 
our Ankh symbol. Anubis is holding... Uh, Anubis, if, if I... I don't remember if I actually explained this. But Anubis is the god of death. Um, he will, in, in Egyptian mythology, he is jackal-headed god, the god of death. And when you come to the underworld, he will weigh your heart on the scale opposite a feather. And if your heart is heavier, bad things happen to your soul. Oh, here's another broken statue bottom. Uh, one wonders how these fires are staying lit. But Oh, we can actually inspect this statue. <coughs> ah, another Senate board. Oh, I'm just so happy about the Senate board. And some more tools. Oh, hello. There appears to be an up. I wonder where this up goes. Nowhere. It goes nowhere. Alright. Well. Well, it has been a lovely hour of play. <laughs> a little bit tense. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed it with me, and uh, welcome to my new watchers. I hope you are enjoying coming along for the ride. I think I am going to... Oops! Wrong button. I'm going to... Save my game there. And... Uh, I will see you next Saturday. Thank you so much for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe, see my Patreon. Ciao. Keep learning, friends.